Charles Starkweather, a teenage killer with James Dean looks. He was a real tough, dangerous guy. A rebel without a cause that spread terror in a community. I can't remember a movie. Oh, speaking of that, oh, I watched a great fucking movie yesterday. My wife was getting so sick of me watching sports or whatever. And I love my wife. I want to hang out with her. I said, you know what? I stumbled across this movie. I want to check it out. It's called uh, Badlands. Um, starring Martin Sheen. And Sissy Spacek. And I got to tell you, you watch that. You're like, oh, now I see where true romance came from. Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska. Natural Born Killers and True Romance. Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska. Natural Born Killers. They're true existential heroes. And it was based on this fucking serial killer. Let me look this up here. Sorry, I don't know. I got to do it on my phone here. Badlands, 1973. Uh, let me see here. It was based off of this fucking guy who went on this this rampage. Um, he killed like fucking 11 people. He went on a murderous road trip through 1950s middle America, leaving a trail of dead men, women, and children in their wake. He killed like 10 of them in like two days. He went on this rampage, and when he got arrested, you know, he had a girl, you know, girlfriend and shit, and she was with him. <clears throat> she claimed that, you know, he forced her to do shit or whatever, so... She got 17 years. He got the fucking electric chair. His initial story uh, they had, I'm sure, cooked up was that, gee, she didn't have any part in it. And that didn't last long. And he started saying, OK, you know, here's the real story. Starkweather was sentenced to death. 15-year-old Fugate to life imprisonment. And um, the guy's murders were fucking brutal. I mean, as most murders are, but just like, you know, old people, kids, just horrible shit. And but this kid looked like James Dean, people said. So it was the first time people sort of got enamored by image. You know, TV was young. This is the 1950s when this shit went down. This is a time when a sheriff shows off criminals for photographers like the prize from a big game hunt. Crowds five or six deep line the courthouse sidewalk just to get a look at the mad dog killer. And um, I got to get you the fucking guy's name here so you can look this thing up. But the most amazing thing was, was it's all like, you know, you know, the broads, they love a bad boy. So they fucking <laughs> they're sitting there going nuts for this kid. And the cop who pulled, who like one of the cops that arrested him actually knew who the guy really was beyond just being like a murderer, right? Uh, serial killer piece of shit. He said when they were shooting at him, they shot his windshield and the glass went into his face and he pulled over because he thought he was bleeding to death. It was like the old West. They were shooting at him from behind and one of the bullets went through the back of the car and pierced his ear. And the cops said, because that's the kind of yellow son of a bitch he was. <laughs> and I was like, there it is. There's the truth of the guy. He's out there f fucking killing kids and old people and just, just all these innocent people. You know, walking around like he's just fucking, you know, I don't know what. And then he gets a little glass on his face. He's like, oh, my God, I'm bleeding to death. Take me to a hospital. Oh, don't be so dramatic. I just nicked you. Um... What is his fucking name? God damn it. All right. Badlands. I really appreciate you guys sitting through this. Badlands. Serial killer. Based on. Here we go. Here we go. No, oh, Charles Starkweather. That's what it is. Charles Starkweather. Listen to this fucking asshole. All right. Mugshot. Not a good mugshot. Um, looks like a Dick Tracy character. But, you know, back then, people weren't good looking. Um, all right. Charles Raymond Charlie Starkweather. That's the worst name I ever heard. Was an American spree killer who murdered 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming between December 1957 and January 1958. A total of 11 people had died. 
10 of them in the space of eight days. This fucking guy was killing somebody like every three days. Uh, when he was 19 years old. He killed 10 of his victims between January 21st and January 29th. If you're doing the math at home, that's eight days. He killed 10 people. This guy was doing two a days, like he was fucking playing Texas football here. Uh, January 21st and January 29th, 1958, the date, of his, the date of his arrest. During his spree in 1958, Starkweather was accompanied by his 14-year-old girlfriend, Carol Ann Fugate. Um, just out of curiosity, is she still alive? Is she this is the woman? She's still alive. Where the fuck is she today? Today, the 76 year old asked for a pardon. A 1950s killing spree that shook the city of Lincoln at the time was revisited today as Carol Ann Fugate. Carol Ann Fugate. Carol Ann Fugate asked for a pardon for her role in the crimes. My God. Um, still alive. But, I mean, she was 14. I don't know. What are you going to do? Born Starkweather. Both Starkweather and Fugate were convicted on charges for their parts in the homicides. Starkweather was sentenced to death and executed 17 months after the events. Fugate served 17 years in prison, gaining release in 1976. Starkweather's electrocution by electric chair in 1959 was the last execution in Nebraska until 1994 when the people of Nebraska demanded the return of capital punishment. They don't fuck around out there. Um, all right. Her relationship with Car- his relationship with Carol Ann, 1956, the 18 year old Starkweather was introduced to 13 year old Carol Ann Fugate by her older sister, whom he had previously dated. Starkweather got a job as a garbage man. It was then he met 13 year old Carol Ann Fugate. To the disappointment of Fugate's family, Carol and Charlie became inseparable. There's just going to be nothing normal in this story, people. He dropped out of Lincoln High School in his senior year and was working at Western Union Newspaper Warehouse. He sought employment there because the warehouse was located near Whittier Junior High High School in Lincoln, where Fugate was a student. Given his working schedules, Starkweather began to visit Caroline Fugate every day after school. He was considered a poor worker. His employees later recalled, sometimes you'd have to tell him something two or three times. Of all the employees in the warehouse, he was the dumbest man we had. (laughs) I love old school quotes. They just fucking say what the fuck they're thinking. When I was a child, spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's Corinthians 1. Chapter 13, verse 11. Uh, Starkweather taught Fugate how to drive, and one day she crashed his 49 Ford into another car. However, Starkweather's father, Guy, was was the registered owner of the vehicle. He paid the damages but argued with his son about it and his having let his unlicensed girlfriend drive. Refusing to condone his son's behavior, Guy banished Starkweather from the family home. The young man quit his job at the warehouse and became a garbage collector for minimum wage. He began to develop a nihilistic worldview. Is that when the sun goes around you? That's like a medical term for being able to read my thoughts. That means now he wants to kill a whole mess of people, right? He can talk to snakes. He could turn into a dinosaur at will or some other creature. He used his time on the garbage route to begin plotting bank robberies. He settled on a personal philosophy by which he lived the remainder of his time. Uh... Dead people are all on the same level. That was his philosophy, whatever the fuck that meant. All right, first murder, late November 30th, 1957. Starkweather became angry at Robert Colvert, a service station attendant in Lincoln, for refusing to sell him a stuffed animal on credit. He returned several times during the night to purchase small items until finally brandishing a shotgun, he forced Colvert to give him $100 from the till. He drove Colvert to a remote area where they struggled over the gun, injuring Colvert before Starkweather killed him with a shot to the head. All right, and he's off. Then, doesn't do shit for like a month. Um, Two months, actually. On January 21st, 1958, Starkweather went to Fugate's home to get his girlfriend, Fugate's mother and stepfather, Velda and Marion Barlett, told him to stay away. He fatally shot them, then strangled and stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
their granddaughter. You don't even want to hear this. This is just it just gets worse. Just check out the fucking movie. It's fucking brutal. I mean, not the movie. The movie. Okay, what this guy actually did is fucking brutal. The movie. Um. The movie basically. There's so many movies that when you watch Badlands from 1973, starring Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, my movie pick of the week. Um, there's so many movies that uh, you see that relationship. Um, there's a Brad Pitt movie, uh, California. There's, um, I always forget the name. I just had the fucking name of it. The Oliver Stone movie. One there with the Natural Born Killers, True Romance, um, the whole style of the movie, the music, the narration over, you know, reminded me of uh, some of the stuff I saw in the 80s and 90s and stuff. Very influential movie, Badlands. Uh, Check that out, 1973. If you can't, if you have the time. Singer Bruce Springsteen has released an album that may make Carol Fugate and Charles Starkweather as well-known among the young as once they were. As well-known as they were, for example, when Mr. Starkweather was executed. For this song, I remember I'd I'd been moved by the Terrence Malick film Badlands, and, and I got interested in the story. They might need the breaks, but I hustle through the cold. I'm on that paper chase, cause the struggle's getting old. I'll give them what it takes, like I'm platinum over gold. And this is just in case motherfuckers didn't know, now they know, yeah. This music, I'll be more than before. It's opportune to open doors, homie, I just wanna soar. Yeah, they know that I want more, that's for sure. So I give them what I feel.